All right, let's talk about how to solve this. So you've got to begin in any of these situations where you're given information about one chemical and asked about a different one to find a balanced equation because you're going to need to relate them using the balanced equation and the mole ratio. So let's do that. Uh, balanced equation, one iron, one iron, one oxygen, two oxygen. Oops, so we're going to need a two here. So uh, 2FeO plus C produces... Fe plus CO2. So I know what two irons two will require two irons. And then two oxygen, two oxygen, one carbon, one carbon. Okay, that's it. We're good. Uh, next thing, calculate the number of moles of each product. So I got to do two calculations, one for the iron, one for the carbon dioxide. So regardless, I'm starting with the 0. 125 moles of reactant in bold, that's the carbon. So 0 0.125 moles of carbon. I'll set up two calculations. And then I'll set up my conversion factor. So I'm being asked for how many moles of each product. So one is I'm going to find moles of iron, for the other I'm going to find moles of carbon dioxide. So let's do the moles of iron first. So I want to put moles of iron here, that way I can get it in the answer. And then here I'll put moles of carbon, that way moles of carbon cancels moles of carbon. I'll do the same thing here, that way moles of carbon cancels moles of carbon. I want moles of CO2. And that will give me an answer with moles of iron for the top one, and that'll get me an answer for moles of carbon dioxide on the bottom. And then what I do next is use the balanced equation to fill in what it would be. So there's nothing next to the carbon. That means there's one mole of carbon in the balanced equation. And for the iron, there's a 2, so I've got to put a 2 here. And for the CO2, there's nothing, so I've got to put a 1 here. So it's telling me to take this times this divided by this in order to get moles of iron. And it does ask how many moles of each product. So the math is easy, but nonetheless, I'll do this just to show for clarity's sake. Um, let's see, let's move this to where it's not all blocked out. There we go. 0.125 times 2 equals 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Make sure, however, that's only two sig figs. However, you want three sig figs. This is infinite. So I'm going to put 0 0.250 moles of iron. That way it's three sig figs. And then here, this is the same number. 0 0.125 moles of carbon. All right, that'd be the answer to that one. Now, this same idea, so I'm just going to skip ahead to show the next kind of question. All right, next one. Same thing, let's balance this one. PCL3 plus H2O, H3PO3, plus HCl. All right. Um, <coughs> one phosphorus, one phosphorus, three chlorine. Let's put a three here. That's six hydrogen. Let's put a three here to make that six hydrogen, three oxygen, three oxygen, three chlorine, three chlorine. Yeah, okay, there we go. It all works. All right, so that's balanced. Calculate the grams of each product. It says you start with 0.5 moles of the reactants in bolts. So we're given 0 0.05 mole or 0.50 moles of this and asked to find the grams of this and the grams of that. That's two reactions. So just like before, I gotta set up two calculations because it's asking for two answers. I gotta do the same thing here. So I'm given 0 0.50 moles of H2O, and I'll write that out twice because I'm doing two calculations, times, and then I want to put moles of H2 on the bottom, that way it can cancel, and then what chemical do I want in the answer? Well, one of each reactant, so moles of H3PO3, and for the bottom one, moles of HCl. And that can come straight out of the balanced equation, by the way. 
moles of H2O, three. Two, both of them. Um, moles of H3PO3, one. Moles of HCl, three. All right, so that's good, except if I stop here, I get moles of HCl and moles of H3PO3, which is, which by the way is um, phosphorus acid. Uh, the thing is though, it, I would get moles if I stopped the calculation right here, but it asked for grams. So what I need to do now is another calculation. I'm going to put for this one moles of H3PO3 on bottom and grams of H3PO3 on top. And then same for the mole of HCl on bottom, grams of HCl on top. In other words, I gotta find the molar mass of HCl, I gotta find the molar mass of H3PO3. And I'm gonna to need to show some work up here for calculating that molar mass. But if I take the mass of molar mass, that means one mole has a weight of a certain number of grams, that will allow me to get an answer with the units of grams of HCl or grams of H3PO3. So, let's do the work. H3PO3. You get 3 times 1.008 grams per mole, that's for hydrogen, plus phosphorus is 30.97, plus there's 3 oxygens, so 3 times 16.00 equals, let's calculate that up, that many, which we will call uh, 81.99 grams per mole each. 3PO3. And same process applies for the HCl, so HCl, 1.008 plus 35.45 equals 36.46 grams per mole HCl. Okay, that's what I need to work with down in here. So uh, let's put that molar mass. One mole of this has a mass of 81.99 grams, and one mole of this has a mass of 36.46 grams. All right, and that gives us the information we need to make sure we have units of grams for this one and grams for this one. By the way, I didn't box these because they're not the final answer. All right, let's calculate this out. And let's move this into position where the light's not making it impossible to see. Reminder, when you calculate this, one step at a time. 0.5 divided by 3 equals times 81.99 equals. And we'll round that to two sig figs for our final answer because two sig figs here. This is infinite. So that's going to be 14 grams. And then similar deal is going to occur with the other one. 0.5 times 3 divided by 3 is the same thing. If you don't believe me, I'll show you. There, see? Same thing. And then uh, times 36.46 equals that, which we're going to round to 18 grams. All right, and so between the two, I can box that. And there we have a solution for that one. Let's continue onward. Let's do one of these. All right, so in this case, it says you have 0.625 grams of the bold substance, this one. Indicate how many grams of the circle substance are produced or consumed. So in other words, it says, you have this many grams of this, how many grams of this do you make? All right, well, as always, if you're given grams of one, um, if you're given an amount of one thing and ask for an amount of another, you need to do a balanced equation so that you can do a mole ratio to figure it out. So let's figure it out. SeO2 plus H2Se produces Se plus H2O. And let's balance this. Two oxygen, two oxygen. Let's put a two right there. Four hydrogen. Let's put a two right here to make four hydrogen. And then that's two selenium. Let's react reactant. Because we're only asked for one thing, we're only doing one calculation. 
So 0.625 grams of the bold substance, so 0 0.625 grams of H2SE times, we need to convert to moles, so we're going to have grams of H2SE on the bottom and moles of H2SE on top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need moles of H2SE here so that it can cancel. And then we need moles of what we're trying to find. That's moles of selenium. And then finally, let's put moles of selenium here again. The reason why is because I want these to cancel. And then for the top part here, we need what we're being asked for, grams of selenium. So that way, grams of, grams of selenic acid cancel grams of selenic acid. Moles of selenic acid cancel moles of selenic acid. Moles of selenium cancel moles of selenium. Then grams of selenium as the answer you're going to get. And that's what it asks for. It's asking how many grams of the circle substance. That's pure selenium. Okay, we got to look at some molar masses for this right here. So for that, well, not look it up, but rather calculate it. There's two hydrogens. So that's your two hydrogens plus selenium itself is 78.96 so totaling that up you get that much which comes out to uh, 80.98 grams per mole H2SE so that tells me that one mole of selenic acid has a molar mass of 80.98 grams okay now Look at the balanced equation. See that too? We've got two moles of the hydrocelenic acid. See that? Another two. All right, and finally, selenium itself. One mole of selenium, according to the periodic table, has a mass of 78.96 grams. And there we go. That divided by that times that divided by that, which is basically the same thing, uh, times that. So anyway, that doesn't make a difference, by the way, but so that's why I'm going to do 0.625 divided by 80.98 equals times 2 divided by 2 doesn't change anything. You'll still get this. And then times 78.96 equals that much. So let's write that for our answer. Rounded to how many sig figs? That's four, that's four, that's three, so let's call it three sig figs, 0 0.609. 0 0.609 grams of selenium should be produced by this reaction. All right, these be different chemicals, but they all work the exact same way. It doesn't matter whether I give you a reactant and ask for a product, or give you a product and ask for another product, or give you a product and ask for a reactant, the process is exactly the same. If you know how to do this, you know how to do these. So, have at it.